So let's get started. This is Feng Shui for Realtors. And my name is Jennifer Bonetto. I am a Feng Shui master and I've been doing this since 2008. Um, I started in corporate America. I did finance and accounting and I have an MBA. Um, but then I decided that a little piece of my soul was dying every day. So I wanted to do something that I loved. And I started working with a couple of different Feng Shui teachers and then I finally came upon um, my teacher and I've been doing it ever since. Um, I was on a couple of television shows. I've done a lot of speaking for um, different organizations. Um, I did speaking for OWN, Oprah Winfrey's network in um, LA, as well as um, different real estate agencies and um, women's groups and business groups. So anywhere and any place they would let me speak, that's what I started doing in the beginning to get clients. Now everything is word of mouth because I've been doing it for so long. But um, so my goal for you guys today is to help you understand what real feng shui is so that you can walk away understanding the basic concepts and really how it works. I'm gonna debunk a bunch of myths and then I'm also going to work with you guys um, on showing you properties that are easy to sell and list and the ones that are more difficult. And what do you do if you have a difficult listing? So I will help you guys with that too. And then at the end, I'm going to teach you guys a system so that you guys can utilize it yourself so that you can make more money, get more clients, um, sell your houses easier and so on. So we'll go through that as well. So let's get started. So you can read what that technical definition is. Um, it's pronounced feng shui. So if you're ever working with Asian clients and you want to impress them, um, you would say feng shui. But here, everybody, if you say it the correct way, they kind of look at you um, funny. So everybody pronounces it feng shui. So basically what it is, is how the energy of a space, so whether it's a home, a business, a retail store, any kind of building, how that affects people and how it'll affect them with money, with health and with relationships. So what I tell people to do in the beginning is to kind of get an idea of how energy works is start paying attention to the places that you've lived in or you've worked in and pay attention to your experiences um, since you were there or if you're still there, your experiences. Were things when you moved into that house, you know, two years ago, are things going well, are things up and down, or have things taken a turn for the worse? The reason why I tell people is to pay attention to that because that is the energy of that space. So what happens is whatever energy a home business has, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, your body starts resonating at that level. And because it starts resonating at that level, whatever level that is, those are the things that you're going to bring into your home. So if the home does not have good energy, then you will notice like one negative thing after another happening versus if it, <clears throat> excuse me, does have good energy, you'll notice, you'll notice um, good things happening. And then if it's okay, it'll just be up and down. Like you'll have some good things, some negative things, some things in between. So just start paying attention to your experiences at different homes that you lived in, different businesses that you worked in. And then when I start explaining to you how energy works and how it affects people, you'll start um, being able to put the pieces of the puzzle together and say, oh, that totally makes sense. I get that. I see why um, that happened. So let's keep moving forward. So the literal or the direct translation is wind and water. But the most important thing is feng shui is how the energy of a home or business affects you. And a lot of times when we're talking about energy, people will say, you know, it's esoteric or it's too woo woo, but it's not. And my whole goal is to be really practical, down to earth about it. Um, I'm not an airy fairy, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I really want you guys to understand the information and how powerful it is and how it works. So what I explain to people is without energy, we wouldn't be here. So our lungs wouldn't expand, our heart wouldn't pump. So energy is everywhere. Even though you don't see it, it affects us. Same thing with oxygen. It's everywhere. Even though you don't see it, you can still breathe. Um, and the same thing with gravity. It's everywhere. Even though you don't see it, um, we're not floating out in the middle of 
outer space because we have gravity. So it's the same thing with energy. There's nothing esoteric or strange about it. What the Chinese did that was different from our Western culture is they studied it over a period of thousands and thousands of years. And they studied it to see how it will affect the human experience. And the human experience has to do with money, with relationships and with health. So anything that happens to you in life, we put it under those three categories. So when we're looking at a business or a home, we're looking to make sure that the energy supports you in those three categories. Now, because I came from finance and accounting, I always say that feng shui is like a natural form of capital. It is like you investing in your 401k or your IRA or your stocks or your real estate. Um, if you invest in it over time, it will pay out dividends. Um, just like feng shui. If the energy supports you in your home or business, you will see it support you in all aspects of your life. And especially in times of crisis or especially in times of financial downturns, like, you know, some people have experienced last year because of COVID or in 2008 when the market crashed. I always tell people it helps you weather the storm. So it doesn't make everything perfect. Your life's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies, but where you see other people dropping off, you will see yourself either stay stable or continue to improve and get better. So my goal is for you guys to learn enough to be able to do that and to take these um, things that I've taught you and use them for yourself. So the way we utilize feng shui has been around for um, over 3000 years. But the way it's practiced in its present form, it's about 1500 years old. So we use these methods in um, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Taiwan. Now, because Chairman Mao took over China in 1944, and when he took over China, he made all what he called the Chinese metaphysics illegal. So feng shui, astrology, um, you know, uh, the massage, um, and like the Chinese herbs, anything that was like Chinese holistic, he made them illegal. So a lot of the feng shui practitioners during that time fled and they went to places where they can openly and legally practice like Hong Kong, Malaysia, Southeast Asia, Singapore, and Taiwan. Um, so a lot of business moguls use feng shui, even though they don't advertise that they use it. Um, people like Steve Wynn, Bill Gates, Richard Branson, Oprah, Wells Fargo, Chase Bank, and Disney. So if you've gone to the Wynn Hotels in Las Vegas, it's completely feng shui from the ground up to the direction the building faces, to where the water features are located, where the lake is, where the doors are, um, where the guest suites are located. So everything has been feng shui from the ground up. Now, of course, it is feng shui to benefit the owner, which is win. Um, so I always tell people, you know, gambling and places like that, you might win, but you might also um, lose big too, because it is going to benefit the owner of the corporation. Now, what's interesting with Wells Fargo and Chase Bank is in 2008, when we had the market crash. Um, those two banks are feng shui. And the reason why they use feng shui is because when they wanted to develop a presence in Asia, um, they were told that you know the only way you can do that is if you incorporate feng shui into the design of the buildings. Well, they did, um, but they liked it so much that they brought it back to America. And those are the two banks that survived um, the merges when banks were being um, taken over, when they were being um, shut down, the bailouts. So I think it's interesting. It's kind of a testament that it does help you weather the storm. So I always tell people um, having energy that benefits you um, will benefit you not just in the short term, but in the long run. Now with real or classical feng shui, um, my lineage is over 400 years old. You want to work with someone that is part of a lineage because then it ensures that the information is true. It's um, been tested, it works. Um, it's a formal education. It's not somebody that went to like some weekend school in San Diego and now they call themselves a feng shui master. It's actually somebody that studied underneath the tutelage of another feng shui master and they um, mastered all the techniques, hence the name. So we use a compass, it's a Chinese compass and it's called a low pan. And the reason why we use a compass is because with energy it's directional. 
So we need to know the direction of the building. It's also based on the location. And then it's also based on the orientation. So we need to know all these things in order to be able to assess the energy of a building. And then at the end, I'm gonna teach you guys how to utilize feng shui with just your own energy. So we take both into consideration, the building, the energy of a building, and then the energy of people and how that is affected and vice versa. And we utilize feng shui for everything, for people that are in existing homes, people that wanna buy new homes, people that are building from the ground up, um, master plan communities, developments, shopping centers, malls. I mean, anything and everything that you can think of, I feng shui. So there's no end as to when you can use feng shui and there's no timeline or due date. You can do it whenever. So sometimes people are like, oh, I've lived in my house for like five years. Is it too late? No, it's not too late. It's never too late. You can use it at any stage in your life. So this is the part where we debunk a couple of myths. So how feng shui came to America was about over 65 years ago. And it was introduced um, as Western feng shui. And the reason why they did that is because um, they thought, oh, if I explain to the public classical or authentic feng shui, people are going to be confused and overwhelmed and they're not going to like it and not be interested in it. So they came up with this cookie cutter watered down version, kind of like a one size fits all fun um, kind of kitsch way to introduce it to the public, which actually did work because it did um, gain a lot of popularity and fame, but what it also did is it brought in a lot of misconceptions and misnomers. So in Western feng shui, people think that every single home faces the same way, every single person is the same. So they'll say in your money corner, put toads with coins in them. And then in your relationship corner, put two Mandarin ducks. Well, energy doesn't work like that. I tell people you can have your tchotchkes, I call them tchotchkes, the little trinkets that you put, that you find like at the Asian store and they'll say that it's feng shui. You can have your tchotchkes in your home, but don't do that thinking that that's exclusively feng shui and then you're sitting there waiting for your partner and you see your cute little mandarin ducks in the corner and you're like, why isn't it happening? And the reason why it's not happening is because energy is about the direction, the location and the orientation. And as we go through, you'll understand more what that means. So in real feng shui, we don't worry about the colors of a house unless you're painting walls red and black. Those are the only two colors that really activate energy. And with those, you would wanna make sure that you're painting the red and black walls of your home, um, the right wall so that it doesn't activate negative energy. I've only walked into one home in my entire career um, where the house was painted black on the inside. So that's not very common. And then red walls used to be more common like years ago when you had different like color blocking going on in the house where that's not very that common anymore. So people don't really um, have to worry about that. We don't utilize bamboo flutes or crystals. So the thing that I will say about crystals is this, um, sometimes people love having crystals like on their person, which is fine. Like, you know, crystals can be very healing if you wanna sleep with them or wear them or hold on to them or use them as jewelry. But in terms of a home, it's gonna be difficult to clear out any negative energy of a home using a crystal that's like, you know, two or three or, you know, four inches in diameter. The house will turn, the crystal will turn into dust before it does anything. Everything has to be in scale and sized and proportioned to the home. So if you do wanna use crystals to clear out negative energy in your home, you need those like four feet or five or six feet geodes that are mined in Brazil, and those are hundreds and thousands of dollars. So I don't recommend those to my clients because it's not practical and it's not cost effective. It's expensive to do that. So with crystals, you know, if you want to have them for yourself, that's fine. But just know that if you're hanging a little round crystal over your window and you think that's going to unblock the negative energy, um, it's not. And I'm sorry to let you know that. Um, we don't do purple pillows. We don't specifically feng shui cats and dogs, but what I do tell people is that um, when you do shift the energy in your home, it does benefit your animals. You'll see them, they'll be calmer, happier. Um, and the same thing with kids. Like you'll notice that if they're sleeping to a good direction, the energy in the home supports them, that they will sleep better. They'll be more amiable, um, you know, considerate, kind, 
that type of thing. And then we don't use feng shui plants per se, but I do love recommending plants for people because this is scientifically proven that plants, certain plants like the snake plants and there's tons of other ones, um, they're natural air purifiers. So they'll detoxify not only negative energy, but negative chemicals that are in the environment. So that's why I love having plants. We don't utilize fish tanks or painting decor or you know feng shui decor or the food dogs. We don't use bagua mirrors or chandeliers. You can have all that stuff, but just know that that alone is not going to shift energy in your home. And then the thing with house numbers. Um, so there's a Chinese superstition that the number four um, is similar to death in Cantonese. So um, a lot of Asian clients don't want that in their address or in the listing price of a home. Now for feng shui purposes, that does not affect the property at all or the energy, but because it is an Asian, a Chinese superstition, um, I tell people, um, you know, like we've been in areas like in Arcadia, I have a lot of clients there. And one of the builders was building a home and the address was 1444. So we petitioned with the city to change the address because I knew that that was going to be a Chinese buyer and they weren't going to go for that and they let us. But it is a difficult process to do. Um, but just know for your purposes, it's fine to have it. It's not going to affect your feng shui. You're not going to have bad feng shui. Um, another thing I recommend is for listing price, try to keep the four out of the listing price. So like if the house is like 1.8444, don't do that. Do like 1.8666 or 1.8333, that type of thing. Um, so that's with the Western feng shui. So just know that Western feng shui is a one size fits all approach, whereas real feng shui is personalized to the home, to the people, to the location. And as we go through, you'll see what I mean. So our favorite types of homes are square or rectangular. And the reason why is because energy can flow the most evenly and the most uniformly. Anytime you get into homes that have weird shapes, um, you could get, you can run into trouble energetically. So we don't like um, L-shaped homes because the heart of the home is missing. We don't like U-shaped homes because the heart of the home is also missing. Um, and that usually indicates um, families are not as tight knit or families can separate or divorce. Um, so that's why we love square and rectangular shaped homes. We also don't like homes that are very skinny. So if a home is three to four times longer than it is wider, we call that um, squeeze chi. And what that indicates is you can have a potential to make money, but it's a situation where you're either breaking even or you're losing money. So things will always come up. Like for instance, the pipes in your house could burst and there's a clause in your homeowner's insurance that doesn't cover it. So then you have to pay out of pocket or, um, you know, God forbid you get hospitalized and part of your insurance doesn't cover it. And then the part that you do covers thousands of dollars. So it's that type of energy. And I know a lot of builders are doing that now because we're running out of land and they're trying to get as many townhomes or condos or houses as they can on a piece of land so that they can make money. But ideally, I would steer you and your clients away from those homes. Just stick with basic square rectangular homes that are on flat um, lots. And you'll see what I mean when we start going through it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our favorite types of homes are homes that are situated in the center of other homes. So like this home right here in the center is perfect. You have a home to your right, to your left. You have landscaping in the front and then homes in the back. So we like homes that are nestled. Um, we don't like corner lots. We don't like homes that are next to empty lots for a long time. The reason why is because the energy or the chi can leave the property and the whole goal is for the energy or the chi to support and stay on the property. Cause that's what gives people good luck with money, with health and with relationships. So ideally, um, I know people love corner lots cause they don't have a neighbor on one side, but depending on which side is the road, like say for instance, you're on a corner lot and as you look out the front door, um, if to the right is the road, that can indicate that females in those properties are not supported. If there's a man living there and he's single, he'll have a harder time um, attracting a female partner. If a woman's living there, it can make women more aggressive. Um, if you look out your front door and the left side has a road, that can indicate that the man is unsupported. So it can indicate um, you know, issues at work, not being able to make enough money. Um, if there's a single woman living there, she'll have a harder time attracting a man. 
So ideally we don't like those. Um, if you do live in a corner lot, you just wanna make sure that um, you have high retaining walls on the side that you don't have a home to represent it so that um, you don't have those issues. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the section where we discuss things on the outside that may be problematic, that might slow down a sale of a house, that might make it harder to um, get a good price for the home. Um, these are usually homes that sit on the market for a little while. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to fix these homes. So ideally what I tell people is you don't, if you can help it, don't live in a home like this or pick a home like this for your client. Um, these tips are for people that are trying to sell homes like this or if you're trying to get rid of your home so that it can sell faster. And the reason why I don't want people moving into these homes and fixing them like I recommend is because you're going to go from a bad home to an okay home. So now your home, once you make the recommendations that I suggest, will get you in an even level playing field with everyone else. The goal of feng shui is for you to be better than, is for the energy to support you more than. So you wanna get a good house and make it excellent, if that makes sense. So these homes are just gonna be okay after we're done. So the first home that most Asian people know about is the T-juncture. So we love homes that face the road. That's not the issue. What we don't like is a home where the road dead ends towards the front door. That is called a T-juncture, because this road right here, where the stop sign is, it dead ends where that house is. These are usually homes like on the five o'clock news where you'll see like a car came careening into somebody's living room. Or it's the home where there's high turnover, where people are moving in and out every year or two years, or the home where it's constantly being sold. And the reason why is because this home doesn't affect people and when doesn't affect people positively, it affects people negatively. And when people are having a hard time, they usually have to move from the home. So these homes can indicate because there's so much energy coming to the home. So earlier when I was talking about energy, we all need energy to live, to breathe, for our heart to pump and our lungs to expand. Um, so we are always trying to find the right balance of energy. So for instance, if you have too much energy or you had too much coffee or you did too many drugs um, and you're like all over the place and you can't focus, that's not a good thing. If you're too lethargic and you're tired and you're slow, that's not a good thing either. You're always looking for the right balance of energy. So not too much, not too little. And it's the same thing in a home. These homes have too much energy. So when a home is being bombarded with too much energy, the people will be affected with high blood pressure, stress, anxiety, fighting, arguments, money issues. So that's why these homes have high turnovers and couples that move into those homes sometimes get divorced. So the easiest thing to do to slow down how much energy is coming to the home, see where these little grass, this little um, plants that are here, you wanna put like a three or four foot stucco or brick wall, that'll slow down the energy in the front. If you can't do that because of the association or whatever, see if you can do like a solid wood fence, three or four feet. Um, if you can't do that, see if you can do like a solid shrub you know, those little shrubs that it's like one solid little wall that goes across. Um, you just want something there so it slows down how the energy of that street comes to the house because you want to try to slow it down. So imagine this road like a fast moving river. Um, if there's nothing here blocking all that water swooshing from the river, it's going to come to the house, right? So that's why we need something here, some kind of barrier to slow it down. And the same thing on the side here. You just want something whether it's a solid fence, solid shrubs, or like a brick or a stucco wall to slow the energy down. And that will help to sell the home quicker. It'll help the people that are living in the home, the tenants or the owners, so that um, they have a better experience. But ideally, I don't want people like buying these properties off the bat and trying to think that you can make it better. It'll just be okay, if that makes sense. So if you're living in a home like this, or you're selling your client's home like this, encourage them to make these changes to help speed up the sale so they can get out of there faster and get into a great house. Now homes to a busy highway, freeway, um, road, what have you. These usually indicate money issues. Um, there could be sleep issues, scattered thinking. Um, these are homes that are more prone to robberies because, or criminal activity because it's an easy way to get in and out. Um, so what I recommend if you have a home that you're trying to sell like this, whether it's a busy road or a freeway or highway, um, you need to encourage the clients to get stucco walls and build them around their property and then have thick landscaping to help 
shelter um, from the busy noise and from the freeway. So the energy can actually stay on the property and not dissipate with the road or the highway or the freeway. Um, so these are homes that people will choose in their ideal neighborhood, but because they can't pick the home that's away from the freeway, they pick the home that's next to the freeway because they want to get into their desired neighborhood. And so I tell people, you might be saving money short term, but in the long run, you will suffer financially or um, you know, health-wise and other ways picking homes like this. So ideally, pass on these homes. If you're trying to sell a home like this, obviously you're not gonna pass on it, but encourage them to do the landscaping, the um, you know, solid walls to help you know, the people living in the home and to help speed up the sale of the home as well. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this is common in mountainous areas or hilly areas. So you don't wanna live in a home where the roof is lower than the actual street level. This can indicate money issues. And when I tell people, it kind of looks like it's in a pit, right? So think it's like a money pit. So it, it does indicate money loss. And it also is more prone to um, people like losing control of their car and landing on the roof of the house. And I've said that before and people are like, oh, that's kind of uncommon. But on my um, Facebook page, people would post different stories of like cars, like in Altadena or areas like that, where they lost control and crashed. And then they were sitting perfectly on the top of the roof of the house. So like the car flipped and then they ended up on the roof of the house, like they were parking there, but that was not on purpose. So with these homes um, to try to speed up the sales and get the people out of here as quick as possible, you want thick landscaping like this house has, or you want retaining walls around the property as well. And that will help to speed up the sale of the home. So um, I, in general, recommend people not to choose homes like this, but if you have no choice, um, at least you can speed it up the sale and try to get out of there as quick as possible. Okay, so main are front doors that do not face the road. Um, ideally, you want your front door to face the road. And I'll tell people this, and then sometimes people will panic because they live in an apartment or a condo or a townhouse. There's exceptions. But in general, you want your door to face the road because you want the energy or the chi of that road. Um, so front doors that are blocked from the road, like in this first example right here, those can indicate either money issues or difficulty advancing in your career. Um, so what I would recommend for this home is you want at least 10 to 15 feet clearance of your front door before you have any wall or landscaping. So for these people, I would just ask them to pull all this landscaping and then put it closer towards the sidewalk. So they'll still have the privacy that they want, but the door isn't being blocked. Like the energy can still come in and flow and benefit people with their money and with their career. Homes that have too much landscaping, um, we call that choking chi, that can indicate depression and health problems. So what I tell people, that's an easy fix just cut down or trim back the landscaping. This is like a little 900 square foot bungalow in Santa Monica. So it's too much landscaping for this little of a house. So just trim some of it back and that will take care of that issue. Now homes with extreme slopes. So when you're living in a hilly area like Laguna Beach, Newport Coast, Malibu, Palisades, um, you just wanna be careful. You wanna make sure that your property is on flat land and if it's not on flat land and you do have sloping on your property, like in this case or in this case, that you have either landscaping where there's a drop off or you have a stucco wall or a wood wall or um, some kind of divider. So you don't wanna just look out your backyard and then there's a hill and then it just drops off into like a river or a ravine or um, a canyon. You want there to be landscaping there. I've done a lot of custom homes in Newport Coast for their clients and the associations there are strict. So we've had to do things where we do little three or four foot shrubs where that drop off is so they can still capture their view. They're not blocking anyone else's view and the association approves it. So sometimes you're gonna have to do things like that depending on what area you're working in um, to make sure that you're not violating the, um, the CNRs from the association or whatever the city regulation is. Laguna Beach is super strict too. Newport Coast is strict too. Santa Monica is probably the strictest. So um, there's always options. Sometimes you can do a combination of that clear plexiglass with like plants in between to ground in the energy. Um, sometimes they will let you do like a short 
wood fence, or just use the landscaping. So whenever you have extreme drop-offs, it can indicate money issues, corporate takeovers, or career issues, because the energy now is not staying on your property. So if you envision energy like water, whenever you're hosing around your property, if you see the water running away, instead of pooling on your property, then you wanna make sure whatever side it's running down to or pouring down to that that side is secure with either landscaping, um, a fence, or um, like a wood wall, something like that. And it can't be a see-through fence, like a chain link fence, because if you hose a chain link fence, the water goes through the other side and it's the same thing with energy. So you just wanna make sure that the property is secure. So this example with these high rise buildings is perfect. They just have landscaping all the way around. So it'll anchor the energy of those buildings and that they can still benefit financially. Okay, so this, hold on one second. It just needs a second. Okay, so for the next picture, homes that are next to um, cemeteries or graveyards, um, it can indicate health issues, depression, um, low motivation, people not feeling like they're um, being productive. And the reason why is because you want to be in an area where you have vibrant uh, yang energy, where the chi supports you. And that's why we like the home facing a road. Um, so this is considered yin chi or dying chi. And you don't want to be next to dying energy because that can affect your property in the same ways. And I know a lot of times people are like, oh, but it's so quiet and peaceful in my neighborhood um, because I live next to a cemetery. I get it. But the people there are dead. So that's why it's quiet and peaceful. And that energy is not going to support you with your goals wanting to make more money, have great health, have great relationships. In order to thrive, you don't want to be next to sites like this. Um, there's an area in Colorado that's called, um, I think it's like Chesapeake Park or Chesame Park. And I was doing research on it and the whole city was built on top of old like um, gravestones. So that's not a property I would ever recommend for my clients to live in because that's um, the reason why I was researching that city because my clients wanted to move there because it is gorgeous, um, it's expensive, it's high end, but no, that's not a place where I would ever send anyone. So if you do have clients, um, like there's some places in Corona Del Mar that are next to that cemetery that are living here and you're trying to sell the property, I would recommend blocking the view of the cemetery from the home so you can use um, landscaping, walls, um, bamboo, anything that you can think of to block it so that you separate the energy of that cemetery from your home so it helps the people's experience in the home so that they can thrive and also so that you can sell the place faster. And it's the same thing living next to churches. Um, you don't want to live next to a church or see the church because that energy is lower vibrating because it's spiritual energy. Um, so you want to block it in view of the home. Same thing with excavation sites or construction sites. You don't want to live directly next to it. Try to block it off as much as possible and um, police stations. So with police stations, it's relative to the area that you live in. So like if you live in a police station next to Irvine, you're fine because, you know, it's like the safest city in America, there's nothing going on there. That's why like if you get pulled over there, there's five cops that are pulling you over. Whereas if you're next to a police station in downtown LA, um, that's more problematic because there's a lot of coming and going and negative criminal activity. So just keep that in mind as well. Location is very important. And then homes that back up to a canal, um, ideally you want that stucco wall because it indicates the money is leaving. So make sure you have stucco walls. And then if you're next to a um, train track, that is worse than being a running operating train track. That's worse than being next to a freeway. So you need to stuck a wall. Like you won't just get away with using landscaping. And that'll help to speed up the sale of that house. Um, and then being next to these like pylons or transmission centers, ideally I would tell people avoid them. There's one that I see on Jamboree and Michelson. There's like an apartment building and then there's a transmission center hiding there, I would say pass on picking that as your future home. Um, if you just have like a telephone pole outside or cable boxes or whatever, that's fine. There's a product I recommend, it's called EarthCom. It helps protect you from the Wi-Fi, from um, the EMFs that's being transmitted. Because the World Health Organization did um, a short-term, medium-term and long-term study on the effects of EMF. In short-term, it was found to cause headaches or colds. Um, medium-term, it was called um, it was 
shown to cause like sleep issues and more chronic health issues. And then long-term it was shown to mutate cells or cancer. So I would say avoid these like huge transmission towers or lines um, or pylons. But if you have like a telephone pole outside or um, the cable boxes, then just get the product. It's called the Earth Calm. And um, I, if you email me at the end, um, I can send you a link. And then unstable foundation. So we don't like floating houses. We call these floating houses, um, you know, where you have the carport underneath you, or this is in Malibu, where it's lifted up off um, the sea level or whatever for the ocean. So this usually indicates money issues, sleep issues, because the energy doesn't come inside the home, it hovers underneath. So like if you're the homeless person living underneath here, you'll probably make a lot of money. But if you're the tenant running or you're the owner of this home, you're gonna have high turnover. And the same thing with these. So like if these were my clients and they owned this apartment community with these carports underneath, I would tell them to enclose this and make them real garages. And the same thing with this, you would have to enclose it. So just know that these type of changes are cost prohibitive. So if you know you don't have the money and the budget to do that, don't pick these homes. And even if you do have the money and the budget to do it, still don't pick the homes because I want you to pick a good home and we can make it great. Now we like mountains um, supporting the back of a home because it's almost like the home is having an energetic hug. So we love mountains in the back. Um, it indicates like good standing in the community, um, support with relationships, health, and with money. So that's good. Now for water features, water features are important uh, because they are conductors of energy. So whatever energy is there, it will conduct or amplify, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. So I tell people pay attention to um, if you do have a water feature like a pool or a pond or a large fountain. Um, since you've lived in that home, have things been going well? Has it been up and down or has it been negative? If it's going well, then it's probably well placed. If it's been up and down, it could be the water feature or it could be something else. And if it's been mostly negative, it's probably the water feature. So if a pool, a pond or a fountain is well um, placed, it can indicate a lot of money success, career luck, good health, good relationships. If it's poorly placed, it can indicate like, you know, payouts to the IRS, money loss, health issues, divorce, um, bankruptcies. I recently had a client who was um, living in a home and she was having issues with her husband and they were separating and the pool was um, located on the divorce energy. So in that case, um, because she couldn't sell the home, I had her cover up the pool. So if you think your pool, if you don't wanna hire somebody and you're trying to do it yourself and you think the pool is a culprit, then get a pool cover. If you think the fountain is a culprit, then shut off the fountain, drain the water. So you can do that. Now, if you um, are in a situation where you think the pool is fantastic, then of course you wouldn't do that. But of course, always consult somebody to make sure if it's good or not. Um, but that's another thing to be aware of is water features. Now I'm going to go through this quickly because I want to explain to you guys the, um, the system where you're going to use the handouts. It's in the chat box. Um, but I'll just quickly, of course, there's a lot that we look at when we're feng shuiing a home. Like you have to look at the furniture placement, the location of the kitchen, the location of the stove, where the bathrooms are. It gets very complicated and detailed. And I do all that for my clients and more. But for this lecture, I'm just giving you the very basic, basic, basics. Just giving you a little crumb so that it's not, it doesn't become overwhelming. Cause I just want you to be aware of three things. When I actually look at the energy of a home, I'm looking at everything on the inside and the outside. But as you guys can just see that the outside of a home is very important. So you guys are all about location, location, location. So are we. The location is uber important because if you can't fix what's on the outside of a property, it doesn't matter what I do on the inside of a property. It will give you a little bit of um, good luck, but the outside trumps the inside. Does that make sense? So if you pick a good location home, the orientation is good, the location, the compass reading, um, and then we look at the inside, then you can make it excellent. Versus if the outside is bad because you have a T-juncture, you have a drop-off, you have this, you have that, and then we go to fix the inside, yes, you will see a result, but it won't be as good as if you have a good location property. So just keep that in mind. 
So the three things we look at, and this is the very, very basics. This is not even going into the tip of the iceberg. So just keep that in mind. I'm doing this so that it's um, in bite-sized pieces for you guys. So there's three things that we look at briefly. Um, in the center of the home, you don't want the energy to be blocked because when the energy comes in from the outside, the flow starts in the middle of the home and there's a low shoe flight path that it takes on. Um, so it's important that you don't have an obstacle in the center of the home. And an obstacle would be um, a floor to ceiling fireplace, um, the complete staircase or a kitchen or a toilet. Now, what we consider the center of the home is you would have to get your floor plan, divide it into nine equal boxes, and the very center box, if it has a kitchen, a fireplace, um, a staircase, or a toilet, then that's the center of the home. If you don't have a floor plan, then you're going to have to do it old school and take the length of your home, the longest wall, the longest width of your home, divide that, and then divide it up into nine equal boxes. So it'll take a little bit of work to do that. Sometimes people will just eyeball it and think, oh, this is in the center of the home. Um, usually it's not the case. You need a floor plan. You need something that's drawn to scale to really be able to tell. So the reason why we don't want those things in the center of the home is because if you have a toilet in the center of the home or a laundry room or a fountain, it can cause health issues with the bladder, the kidney, the fluids of the body or the blood. So you're more prone to UTIs, bladder, kidney infections, or blood or fluid related um, health issues. So if you have a toilet in the center of the home and you have other ones that you can use and you're having these symptoms, stop using that toilet. Tell everyone to stop using that toilet. You can use the sink there, you can use the shower, but just stop using the toilet. If it's a fountain that's in the center of the home, just shut it off and drain it. And then if you have a laundry room in the center of the home, see if you can remodel it to the bathroom, to the um, garage. If you have a floor to ceiling, fireplace in the center of the home or you have a kitchen, that can indicate high blood pressure or heart issues or heart disease or high cholesterol or heart attacks. So what I tell people is if it's a floor to ceiling fireplace, just stop using it and those issues should clear up. If it's a kitchen, it's gonna be harder to remedy. So unless you don't cook, it's you're gonna have a hard time remedying it. So then we'll try to pump up the energy and the other parts of the house to help mitigate it. But ideally try to choose homes that don't have that scenario. And then if you have a staircase in the exact center of the home, that can affect people's um, skeletal system. So the bones, the joints, um, the cranium, the back, that type of thing. Um, and the longer you live there, the worse these issues become. So because you can't remodel, in the 12 years that I've been doing this, almost 13, um, I've only had one client remodel a home because the staircase was ill located but this was like a um it was a you know like those old victorian homes it was like a classic home and they loved this home so they spent like i think it was like two hundred thousand dollars to remodel the staircase because it was an older home they had to do all kinds of engineering things because it was a victorian home that's the only client i've ever known that's done that so ideally don't pick homes with staircases in the center of the home because long term it can affect your bones your joints your skeletal system. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, excuse me, sometimes people will get nervous and they'll be like, oh, I have an office in the center of the home, that's fine. Or I have the nursery in the center of the home, that's fine. The things that are obstacles to the energy flow are the ones that I just described. That's what you don't want in the center of the home. And if you can um, relocate it or shut it off or whatever the issue is, great. If you can't, then we try to pump up the energy in the other parts of the home on the outside, the inside to help mitigate. Okay. Let's work on this eight mansion system. So if you go down to the chat box, um, you want to look to see the link where I put the charts on there. Does everyone see that link in the chat box below? Because I'm going to want you to reference those charts right now. This is the part of the lecture where I'm going to teach you how to use this for yourself. You guys don't see the link? I think it was posted several times. Here, I'll repost it. 
Can you see it now? Okay, so just click on that link and there's two charts on there and I'm gonna walk you through how to use these charts. And then in your own time, you can either download them to your phone or print them out. And then somebody commented that the driveway um, affects homes in the mountain. That's true. I didn't get into it in this one because I'm just trying to give you guys like the basic stuff. But if you do have a driveway that, if your home is down below and the driveway goes down into the home, that usually indicates like relationship or health issues. If you have a home that's up high and the driveway drops out to the street, that usually indicates money issues. So yes, that's correct. The driveway can affect relationships or money flow. Okay, so let's go into these charts. So everybody sees the link. And then, so there's a question. What if the garage is sitting lower and not the house? The house is sitting on the road on the side, but the side road for the house goes down to the garage entry. Um, I'm not really sure what that means. So, so the house is sitting on the road on the side, but the side road for the house goes down to the garage entry. Um, I think if the house is separated from the garage, it's okay, but it's still not ideal. Why do you divide the length by the number nine? You don't divide it by the number nine, you divide the floor plan into nine equal boxes. And then what is the remedy to mountain in the center of the house? Um, in the lecture, I said there's no remedy because unless you're going to remodel the house, it's too cost prohibitive. So then we do other things to try to um, pump up the good energy in the home. So ideally, just choose a home that doesn't have that. Okay, let's see here. So we have the eight mansion system. So I want you guys to look at these charts. Um, let me see. Okay, so these are the charts. Your charts are going to be different on your website that you go on. That's my website. So the first chart is this one on the right. I'm gonna teach you how to find your Guan number right now. So what I want you to do is make sure you look under male if you're male, female if you're male. Look up under the year that you're born. If you were born after February 4th to December 31, you just use the year that you're born. So like if I'm born um, February 6th, 1985, I use 1985 as the year to look up my Guan number. If you're born January 1, to February 4, you're gonna use, you're gonna subtract one and use the previous year as your year of birth. The reason why is because we go up the Looney solar calendar and that doesn't begin until February 4th, 5th or 6th, depending on the year. So if you're born January, like for instance, my son is born January 21, 2017. So when I calculate his Guan number, I use 2016 and he's a boy, so he's a two Gua. Does that make sense? So if you're born September 7th, 1986, then you just use 86 as a year to find your Guan number. Do you guys have any questions on that? So just look up if you're male, male, female, female, and then look up your Guan number. So the only people that need to worry about taking using the previous year is people born January 1 to February 4. If you're not born during that time, then just look up your normal year. Okay, so once you find your Gua number and it's based on the year you're born, and once again, I'm gonna repeat it. If you're born January 1 to February 4, just use the previous year. So if you're January 5, 1955, use 1954 as the year you're born. Anyone else, use your current year. So you'll see that chart, and then you're going to click on and see this chart. I'm going to explain that chart to you in a second. Let me go back because I want to go over this first. Okay, so everybody has four good directions and then four negative directions. So the four good directions support us with money, with health, with relationships, and with stability. The four negative directions can obviously negatively impact those categories. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the four good directions. So what I want you to do is once you find your Gua number, I want you to go to the other chart and you're going to look up your Gua number again. And it'll usually be like highlighted in color. You'll see those are your good numbers. So like if you're a three, you'll see that your money direction is the south, your health direction is the north, relationship is southeast and stability is east. Or if you're an equa, your money is southwest, 
your health is Northwest and your relationships are West and so on. So what does that mean? So the directions, how we use them is exactly what they indicate. So if you're looking to increase money in um, your business or your annual salary, or you want more clients, or you want a promotion, then you're going to utilize the money direction. And I'm going to explain to you guys what that means. Just let me explain what everything means. And then I'll show you how to actually put it into practice. So we call it your Shang-Chi. So when you use your money direction, we call that the millionaire chi. Now, if you're great with money, but you want to improve your health because you've had a string of health issues, or you're getting older and you're feeling like more tired or run down, or you're young and you just want to have more energy health-wise, and that's a really big focus for you, like to get fit, to work out, to eat better, to stay motivated, then you would use your health direction. We call that the plus 80, it's pronounced Tian Yi. Your health direction, direction supports you with your health, but it also supports you with making money. So it's a secondary money direction. Now, if you're single, you want to date, you want to get married, I tell people use your relationship direction. It's also a good direction, like if you're farming in an area or you want word of mouth referrals because you're trying to enhance the relationship aspect of your house, it'll help activate that as well. And then the last direction that I tell people only use if you can't use the other good three ones is your stability direction. It just keeps you stable in your own energy. Nothing bad happens, but nothing great happens. So it'll just kind of keep you um, flowing so that you can continue to do what you've been doing. But ideally pick either money, health, or relationships. Those are the best directions. So those are what the directions mean. This chart will help you find what your money, your health, your relationship, or your stability direction is. And I'm going to show you right now how to put that into action. Okay, so if you're part of the East Life group, you're either a three, a four, a one, or a nine gua. And you'll see that there's nine equal boxes here. And you'll see that the colored ones are your positive directions. So if you're a four, your plus 90 is money, plus 80 is health, plus 70 is relationships, and then plus 60 is stability. In your charts, it tells you that money is plus 90. It'll tell you what these are. If you're a West Life group, you're a six, a two, an eight, or a seven. And then the colored ones again. So your plus 90 is your money, health, uh, relationships, and then stability. So you have those color coded to make it a little bit easier. Now, what I need you to do is use your iPhone compass. Unfortunately, Android is really inaccurate. I'm sorry. Um, just use a friend that has an iPhone. I don't have any other recommendation for you because I've had clients or um, people that I'm working with try to download the app. It doesn't work. It's inaccurate. The iPhone is the most accurate compass. It's under extras and it's your compass app. So it'll tell you the degree and the direction. You need this in order to do this. Um, the reason why is because you want it to be accurate. So you would hold your compass like this at waist level and then point it outwards. So you're gonna stand outside facing out, holding your compass like this down towards your belly button. Hold it still, make sure that everything's parallel, that you're not holding it to the right or to the left, you're holding it straight on. You're staring outside looking at the road and it will say you're facing Northwest at 304 degrees or it'll say you're facing south at 182 degrees. Whatever it is, you need to keep that um, direction in mind. This right here tells you all the directions and the degrees within the directions. The reason why you have to use a compass if you're gonna do this in your home or in your business is because a lot of times people think they know the direction that their home or their business faces and they're incorrect. So like for instance, people are like, oh, my home faces the ocean, it faces west. That's not true because our coastline curves. Um, it could face Northwest, it could face Southeast, it could face Southwest. That's why you always wanna take a compass reading to make sure that um, you have the correct direction. Because if you're gonna utilize the system and you wanna get a result, you need the right direction. If not, you're gonna be like, this sucks, it didn't work. Um, she was talking about it and pumping it up and nothing happened. That's why nothing happened because you don't have the correct compass reading. So just keep that in mind.
And it's a scientific thing that men are better oriented towards direction. And I say that, and sometimes men will get cocky about it, still take a compass reading. Women are more geared towards landmark, that's true. Like if you tell a woman go Southwest on this street and then it'll be on the East corner sometimes, um, some women will panic. Versus if you tell her it's next to Nordstrom or it's next to this, then we're like, okay, yeah, I know where it is. But it doesn't matter, you still have to take a compass reading. If you're a woman, female, I don't care, um, take a compass reading to make sure that you have the right direction. Okay, so the GWA number, once you find out what your GWA number is, so it's a number one through nine, excluding five. So you're either a one, three, four, or nine, or you're a six, two, eight, or seven. Um, it's kind of like in Western astrology when they tell you personality traits, um, so it kind of tells you characteristics about your personality. Um, it'll tell you body parts that you might be vulnerable health-wise. It'll tell you careers that you might be interested in, um, things that might affect you short, medium, or long-term. And then it, the most important thing it does, it gives you the energy dynamic of people. So sometimes you could work somewhere and there could be a person that's nice, but you just don't jive with them or you don't get along with them. It's because of the energy dynamic. So, um, you know, depending on when their birthday is, you might not be compatible in that way. And that's why you'll have a favorite child or um, you'll get along better with one spouse than you did with spouses in the past. It's the energy dynamic and that has to do with your one number. So it's the compatibility. And it also gives us the compatibility of different buildings, the orientation and the location as well. Okay, so once you know your one number, once you know your money direction, your health or your relationship or your stability, direction, you're going to use this in your home and you're going to use this in your business as well. So you're going to want to make sure that you situate everything, um, whether you're sitting down or you're working so that you're facing your favorable directions. So you're going to want to start sleeping with your head to one of your favorable directions. You're going to walk in and out of doors that face your favorable direction, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether it's a garage door, a side door, a back door, a front door, whatever door it is, that's either your money, your health or your relationship direction, you're gonna exclusively start walking in and out of that door. When you're working, you're gonna set up your desk at home, at work, your cubicle, your chair, so that you're facing one of your good directions. When you're in a conference room, whether you're negotiating with clients, whether you're negotiating with other um, real estate people, you're going to get there early, figure out the directions, sit there facing your money direction. When you go see a client at a home, you're going to get there a few minutes early, figure out the direction. When you sit down in their living room, in the kitchen, wherever they want, you're going to pick a chair that faces a good direction. Um, if you're meeting them at Starbucks, at a restaurant, same thing, get there a few minutes early, you pick your chair. Um, you're also going to do this um, in terms of setting up your TV or if you meditate or if you read books so that you're facing one of your four good directions. So you're going to do this in all aspects of your life, whether you're at home or whether you're at the office. Now, what I tell people is that you want to give this at least three months. And then once you start getting good results, keep doing it. You don't stop um, doing it. You continue on. And then another thing I would tell people, most of the time people get good luck from this. Sometimes they don't. And the reason why is because you're looking at one aspect of energy. Whereas if I come and function your home, your office or whatever, I'm looking at the building, you and the energy compatibility. So just keep that in mind. You're only doing one aspect. So you might, there's a 50% chance this won't do anything. It won't do anything bad, but you just won't get a result. You'll be like, okay. Well, that didn't work. So the reason why it didn't work is either you don't have the direction down or because there's something in the energy of the building that's counteracting your personal direction, if that makes sense. So when I do it, I look at everything and combine it together. But this is great because a lot of people have contacted me and they've gotten amazing results from just doing this. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so here are some examples. Now let me see, I know a question popped up here. So you're going to get your examples right now. Okay. So this home, they figured out that East is here, West is here, North, South, right? So every single room in a home, every single home has all eight directions. 
whether it's a corner, whether it's a solid wall, whether it's um, the side of the house. Every single room in your home has all eight directions. So like for instance, if you're seven wa, Northwest is your many direction. So you would put your bed, if this was your home, um, to the Northwest corner. So the Northwest corner, meaning your head is going towards the Northwest. So it's not where your feet are pointing. A lot of people make that mistake. It's where your head is going. So when we activate the direction, it's what wall your headboard or your head is going towards. So this would be excellent for a seven wall person. Now keep in mind, if you sleep to a corner, you need a headboard and you wanna put a plant back here because energy is stronger in corners. And sometimes if you don't have a plant or a headboard, people don't sleep as well. Excuse me. Um, so keep that in mind for this one. Here, I'm gonna show you another example. So if you're a six gua, west is your money direction. You would put your head so that you're sleeping with your head to the west. Um, contrary to popular belief, you can sleep with your head to a window. So in the olden days, like 60 years ago, when the windows were aluminum and there was a draft, it wasn't ideal because people didn't sleep well, but now the windows are great. You don't have an issue with that. Just make sure you have a headboard, just make sure you have curtains or some kind of window treatment and you can totally sleep to a window. So it's not bad feng shui, contrary to popular belief. But you always wanna make sure you have a solid headboard. Headboards um, indicate support with relationships, with health, with everything. So you always need a headboard and it can't be a wrought iron one. So keep that in mind. Now for the desk, I'm gonna show you some examples of the desk. Okay, this thing is being, I have a lot of applications open, that's part of the problem. Okay, so if you're a seven gua and um, this is your office, you would be facing towards the Northwest. So when you're sitting up looking at the direction, you're facing it. When you're sleeping, it's where your head is. So you wanna face yourself so that you're facing Northwest. If you have a cubicle, um, and you can move cubicles, do that. If you can't move cubicles, then just adjust your seat, your chair, your laptop so that you're facing a good direction. So whenever you have fixed furniture, you adjust yourself um, versus moving the furniture. And it's the same thing when you're watching TV. So you would adjust the couch so that you're facing a good direction when you're watching TV. Okay, let me see if there's other. Yeah, those are all the examples. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to answer um, questions that you guys have. And then I just want you to know that um, this lecture is for your guys' personal use. I don't recommend people um, using it for your clients because if you make a mistake or an error, they're going to be very angry with you. So just do this for yourself and see how it pans out. Um, I do do consultations. It's all based on the square footage. And I also have classes. They're all online, the classes, um, and there's a series of them and you can do exactly what I do. And I always recommend that real estate people or interior designers incorporate feng shui. So if you go to my website, it's all listed here. The classes are on there. Um, and then there's a blog on there where there's so much free information on different types of homes, the orientation location, different things that you can do, um, my phone number and my Instagram as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up to your questions. And then keep in mind too, that I will send, if you guys sign up um, for the newsletter on my website, I'll send out um, one of my books. So it'll just be like first come first serve. It sends me an email of the people that sign up for the newsletter. And then I'll just send you an email and then ask for your address and send you a book. And just know I only send out one newsletter a month. Um, sometimes I only send out one every two months. I don't spam, I don't sell anything. Um, it's all informational. Like this past month, the techniques I taught you, like if you're single and you wanna get in a relationship, all the things that you should do in your home so that you can find your partner. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's go into the questions. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Um, I can't email you slides, but you're gonna get um, a link to this video. So what does that mean, direction? So I think I gave you examples of what the direction means. 
Um, what if people in the house have different directions? For example, husband and wife, different directions in regard to bed location. So there is an advanced system and it takes the facing degree of the home into consideration. So we really do have more than four directions that are good for us. But for this class, I just taught the basics. So what I tell people in your situation, if you don't want to hire a consultant, um, just pay attention to see how you and your husband are doing. Like, do you sleep well? Is your relationship strong? Is money good for both of you? Then you would keep the bed the way it is. If it's not, then you'll have to do trial and error and move the bed and then wait three months and see how both of you guys are doing and then keep doing that. But you don't have to sleep like with your foot in um, your husband's face or vice versa. There are more than four directions that support us. So stairway facing the front door. So ideally you want 10 feet from the front door to the staircase. So if the staircase is 10 feet away from the front door and it faces it, it's fine. If it's not, then that can indicate money issues. And then of course it's cost prohibitive to change that. So ideally um, I tell people to, um, you know, try to find a different property or, you know, pump up the energy in the other parts of the home to help give people good luck. Somebody put their email on here. Um, don't put your email on here. Just go to the website to sign up for the newsletter. Is a fountain in front of the T-juncture work the same as shrubs or wall to slow down energy? It does not. It can actually make it worse. So um, I would definitely use a shrub or some kind of wall to slow down that energy. Can you explain how to find the direction of your home again? Um, so you want to stand outside facing out and then use the compass app on your iPhone or um, iPad, but it's more accurate on your iPhone. And then you stand outside facing out. You hold your cell phone parallel to the ground like this and then just drop it down to your belly button level. You're looking outside and then it will say like for me, it's saying, um, Southwest 211 degrees. And then let's see. So water flowing in the back of the home, is that bad? What about the side of the home as long as it's moving and it's not stagnant? Um, water flowing in the back of the home isn't ideal. You want some kind of retaining wall back there because that indicates the money is leaving. If you have water on the side of the home, depending on what direction it is, it could be good or it could be negative. It just depends on the facing direction of your home and when the client moved in or when you moved in. Um, can you send me the recorded link to my email? So they're gonna send it to you automatically when you registered um, for the class. So whatever email you gave them is the one they'll send it to. And then how do I sign up for the newsletter? So the newsletter, you just go on realfengshui.com and the newsletter box will pop up and you just sign up on there. And then my front door faces west. I don't, is that a question or just a statement? I'm not sure. Okay, so what would you do if a person's head when in bed can't be, for example, Northwest because of a corner that is created by a closet or window, can't block the closet with the bed. Um, then you would try to pick a different direction that's good for you or for that person. Or um, you would create a pony wall um, by pulling the bed away from the closet or whatever it is that's there and still sleeping to that direction. Or you could get a day bed and sleep to that direction, but put it on a different wall. I live in a corner apartment, is that okay? Um, it depends on if um, there's another building outside of that corner. If there is, it's fine. Could I use a compass, um, not an iPhone? Uh, you could use like a digital compass that you find on Amazon. And then the consultation price. So homes up to 2000 square feet, it's 380. And then up to 4000 square feet, it's 480. If there's not an iPhone, can I use a compass? Yeah, you can just get one of those $30 digital compasses on Amazon. So if the front door faces west, is that okay? It depends on the uh, move-in date and it depends on your birthday. What happens to homes that are on the water? So the back of the house is a dock slip. Actually, that's the front of the house, just so you know. Um, if you live in Huntington Harbor or Newport Harbor, if the dock slip, um, you think that's the back of the home, that's the front of the home. Um, it could be good. It just depends on the facing direction of your home when you moved in and your birthday. 
and I do do personal consultations. Um, do you guys have any other questions? So just know I do personal consultations. I have all my classes online on my website. Um, you can just contact me if you're interested in those. And then for the newsletter, you just sign up on my website. And then I post, I try to post, um, you know, at least twice a week on Instagram. There's different pictures and examples. And then at the back of the house is the sand or the beach. So the back of the house is not the sand or beach. That would be the front of the house. The front is considered where the most amount of energy comes from. And if you live next to an ocean or a beach, that's the most young or vibrant energy. It um, beats out a road or a highway. Um, it could be good. It just depends on, again, the degree that the home faces, your birthday and when you moved in. Let's see, is there any other questions on here? Do you guys have any other questions? Just know you'll get the recording. They're going to email it to you. Um, and then whatever questions you have, uh, you can make sure and email me as well. My email is on my website. There's a contact box. But um, if not, it's jennifer at realfengshui.com. And you can email me with questions as well. So jennifer, J-E-N-N. I-F-E-R at realfengshui.com. Um, there is a report. It's an email report that is provided if I do a consultation. I call it a recap. Does anybody else have any other questions? You guys have been so great. Let me see. I think there's one more that popped up. All right. So I think they're going to send you guys everything. And then uh, whatever questions you guys have, just let me know. And I can answer those um, privately as well. So I thank you guys so much for attending. My name is Jennifer Bonetto. Um, I'm with Real Feng Shui Solutions. And hopefully I will either talk to you guys or connect with you guys on social media or email. Thank you.